Okay, I've been asked by somebody on the website to put together a little tutorial about um, showing the processes for applying inter-rater reliability or inter-coding reliability testing uh, between a coding team on a research project using Invivo. And this is version 8 we're using for the demo because this particular person uh, is using version 8, although it is available in 9 as well. And the project I'm going to show you is a project I worked on only two weeks ago in Tanzania. It's an EU-funded research project uh, looking at um, motivation in three different countries. It's being run by the University of Heidelberg. And I spent a week out there coding with the research team to code. Now we had some coding done. So we initially coded the three um, countries separately to test the instrument for data collection in the field. So you can see here that there's a a consistent level of coding. There are 35 transcripts from Tanzania, for example, and all of them discussed choice of profession and indeed subtopics below that. So that was for testing the instrument. But in relation to the inter coding, what we did was we asked each of the countries, all six coders, to code this node enumeration. Rather than code a transcript, because it was coding several transcripts and would give us a more broad sense of what the data was going to produce. And they coded on these subcategories. You can see here the levels of coding have changed to reflect the additional coding. We also cross coded. We coded from these other nodes into this and then coded on into child nodes. But the test itself centered on remuneration and these particular nodes. So if you take, for example, uh, additional income, here's a range of topics coded by several coders. Now the process was that we gave each coder a copy of the same file, a master file. One for me and one for each of the six coders. The six coders then set about coding the same data set. And then we merged all of the, the projects back into a single file by taking the file on my machine and doing file import project. And that simply allows us to browse for the project file and import. And that merges the files together. Now that allows us then to take these additional files and consider all of the coders. You'll see then when you open up your project file, if you go into the project properties and look at the users, you can see all of the users are now present in the file. And we can now see that we can now test the reliability against these various nodes. So if we open up a node here, we can see a group of people have coded. I should say that before we did that, we looked at all of the nodes. Some of the nodes had the same labels, but different rules for inclusion. A rule for inclusion is basically a descriptor of the node. If you go into the properties, you can see uh, this node is called, uh, the label is effectively the same as the rule for inclusion because it's self-explanatory. But that means that we can check the meaning of the label so what each coder makes a label, he puts in an, a definition against that label. So if they choose similar or different labels but with the same meaning, we can then manage that process. We can merge those nodes because we know effectively it's the same thing. And then after that process, if you open the node, you can see that the content of the node, we can see who coded it by switching on the coding stripes for selected items. And instead of selecting themes, we select users. And that means that we can see, as we peruse through the document, where the coders agree. So you can see here these labels. And by the way, you'll see two BMs, but they're actually two different people. Um, one of them was using my machine. So you can see here that um, these people, D here and uh, HP, didn't code that piece of text to this node, but all of the others did. So you, have a, you can see as you go through the document, the levels of agreement across and between the coders against each of the segments of text in their coding. Now that's a crude instrument, but it does give you a good guide as to what's going on in your data in terms of the, the agreement levels. And you can do that for as many nodes as you feel are necessary. Now if I look at uh, financial incentives or additional income, I think I have one here called overtime. So people who see overtime payment as an additional income. So if I take that and I run the query, which is the inter reliability coding comparison query. So 
So this is a coding comparison query in Envivo. And I it, rather than just take two coders, we split the coders into two groups, one group and then the other, and then compared one group, group A, against group B. And you simply uh, select the nodes, so we can narrow the, the criteria down then to the various a group of nodes or an individual node in our set. We display the CAPAS coefficient. That's a scientific measurement about the levels of agreement between the codes based on the words that have been coded and the percentages as well. And we simply run that and we get our coding. So we have our coding stripes and then we have the levels of agreement. And you can see they're very high here between the various, uh, the two groups of coders. Of course, you could run this test equally among two individual coders and take them in, in sets of two. I did it differently. I just put the two into two groups and coded them because I was happy from the coding stripes that we were achieving greater than 70% agreement, which was the benchmark that we set for ourselves.